ओम श्री साई राम वेलकम टू साई संदेश साई पर्स ऑफ विजडम टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू नो सम डिटेल्स रिगार्डिंग द पब्लिकेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट बुक ऑन बाबा रिटन बाय हिज ओन टीचर दोज डेज डिवोटिस बीइंग फ्यू इन नंबर वेयर एवर स्वामी वेंट बेंगलोर और कमलापुरम और कलंदेश्वर ऑफ चित्रावती ही ग्रांटेड वॉट एवर डिवोटिस वॉन्टेड अब्बैया इज वन डिवोटी वे नो चिल्ड्रन एंड ऑलवेज प्रेड टू स्वामी टू गिव हिम प्रोजेनी यस हिज विश वॉज ग्रांटेड एंड समबडी आस्ट स्वामी क्यूर द स्टमक एक ऑफ माई बॉस यस ही मेटल इज ए यंत्र फॉर हिम विच गिव हिम रिलीफ When thieves looted the house of a neighbor by name Nikkam while he was at Puttaparthi Baba told him Your house in Bangalore was broken do not worry for I have taken care of it with the result nothing is lost During this time he was telling all that he would attain samadhi after which he will be born again in Mandya near Mysore in the state of Karnataka and all devotees say Swami we don't want to leave you we want to leave you too that's why we will never leave you that's what they said well Swami never liked these people to go back to Bangalore from Puttaparthi he wanted them to stay there sometimes he would shed tears also when they were about to go that was the kind of attachment that swami had towards his devotees ejaman narayan appa had no parents he loved baba so much that he wanted to be with him all the time and become his disciple he decided to settle down at puttaparthi and gave away all his household things and in fact Somebody accompanied Narayana Pa to the railway station to board the train to Hindupur. Some of the relatives cried. Jokingly, one of his friends told him, "Why are you crying? Don't cry. He will be back to us in eight days. Narayana Pa will return in eight days." That's what he said. What a prophetic uh, statement it is. Narayana Pa reached Puttaparthi. and stayed a few days baba then took him to madras for a few days and dropped him at his house in bangalore on the ninth day within a few months his uncle ranganna passed away narayana pa and a second uncle approached baba the second uncle's name is tangavelu modaliyar and these two requested swami to resurrect ranganna the second uncle of this narayana pa baba replied i am also like you if you cannot give him life how can i the conversation turned bitter and they asked many unwarranted questions quarreled with baba and left they had faith and devotion towards baba but baba always knows what is to be done But when we were in Chitravati Hills earlier, all the five of us promised to lead honest lives and avoid eating mutton on Thursdays. This was the pledge of some who have come to Swami. And friends misbehaved with Baba, and everybody felt bad on their account. And see what happened. They did not have the face to see him. until 1995 only then they could meet him that's all so swami gives you a chance and if you misuse it well you will have long long punishment sesham raj as you know is the brother of bhagwan sesham raj was brother in law pashupati rama rajo and his friend g subbanna both hail from kamalapuram They heard about Baba's miracles, 
and visited Puttaparthi a few times. When they went back to Kamalapuram, they shared Baba's wonderful leelas with their friends and relatives. Everybody was talking about his materializations at the Chitravati river. Many people scoffed, questioning what the small Satchanarayana could do. To prove that Baba was extraordinary and powerful, Ramaraju and Subbanna took him to Kamalapuram. They took Swami to Kamalapuram in 1945. They took him in a procession around the town in a bullock cart. He stayed in Subbanna's house for three days. During his stay, there were bhajans at the houses of Ramaraju and M.V. Narsimuru. People moved by his personality and his love, kept aside their criticism and attended in large numbers. Narsimuru would recall later the details of Baba's visit to his house. He would even show the place where Swami sat, where bhajans were conducted. That was the thrill and excitement everybody had in those days. Baba brought a Shirdi Sai Baba photo and first sanctified the floor. During bhajans, he closed his eyes and was immersed in the lyrics. He performed harati after bhajans and puja. During this visit, he met a vibhuti and a piece of akar cloth and gave them to a few people in Kamalapuram. These are things that he did in Kamalapuram, having gone there. Baba's teacher at Bukapatnam School, by name V. C. Kondappa, wrote the first book in Telugu on Sri Sai Baba, entitled Sri Sai Shuni Charitra. He was fortunate to procure its poetic contents from Baba himself. Baba asked him to stay up alone one night at Puttaparthi and had narrated the life story of the first 16 years of Shirdi Sai, as well as details of his own life. That night Kondappa had a vision of Shirdi Sai. B.C. Subhanachar, another teacher who wrote the foreword for the book written by Kondappa, he also happened to be the teacher of Bhagavan and they were very eager to meet Swami in the later years after hearing of Swami and his devotion towards Shirdi Sai. Subhanachari's first impression was that Baba was a great devotee of God. With frequent visits to Puttaparthi, Subhanachari became convinced that Baba was not an ordinary boy, but one endowed with divine power. Baba soon revealed to both Kondappa and Subhanachari that he was indeed the incarnation of Sai Baba of Shirdi. We see Kondappa asked Baba, you tell everyone you are Shirdi Baba reborn. What is the proof? Before I write a book on you, I should know this. It was then that Baba agreed to reveal his identity to them. After this, many devotees prayed for this vision. But Baba replied, it cannot be granted to everyone. There is a specific reason for this. Baba took keen interest in the preparation of the book. After the book had been released, Baba asked M. L. Leela one day to read the book in his presence at the Chitravati riverbed. When the sentence, Shirdi Sai Baba is now reborn as Shirdi Sach Sai Baba was read, Baba's form changed to that of Shirdi Sai Baba. From among the assembled crowd, her father by name Lokanatha, Mother Yar, he rose shouting, Hey Sai, Hey Sai. He could not control his ecstasy. He could not control his emotions. He was simply dancing and came towards Baba and hugged him tightly. Baba found it very difficult to release himself from Mother Yar's embrace until his form again changed. Until he came to his normal form, he didn't leave him. For many years, Sri Sai Shri Charitra was the most authoritative version of Baba's biography. N. Kasturi mentions that he too had learned heavily from material in this book 
for his biography Sachin Sivam Sundaram. Later, in September 1944, Sai Baba visited the historic city of Mysore for the first time. His visit was primarily to witness the Royal Dasara festival and to see the famous Kannambadi Dam, later called the Krishna Raja Sagar Dam. He stayed in Mysore for three days and left on the fourth day. On Vijay Dasami, in September 1944, Baba was invited to attend the marriage of Sumitramma, the daughter of Gopal Rao at Kannambadi, Mysore. Baba went along with a few devotees. Many ladies in Baba's group were decked with ornaments. Sumitra's family, being poor, could not afford gold ornaments for the bride. Seeing the situation, the ladies decorated the bride with their own ornaments. Associated with Baba had inspired them to spontaneously share their own ornaments. And Baba materialized and presented a talisman to the bride on that occasion. The fortunate lady would recall the happenings of that day. Swami was like any other ordinary boy, very humorous and playful. Everyone in the marriage party instantly liked him. Swami demonstrated a shadow play of animals and birds on the white wall with his hands. People, especially children, enjoyed it very much. My grandmother, the bride's grandmother, Tolosemma, was 80 years old at the time of her marriage. She had chronic headaches which greatly tormented her. When Swami came to the marriage function, on the first day, he sat in the marriage hall. Many people did not know in the beginning who this boy was, nor did anyone bother much about him. Suddenly, her grandmother rushed towards the boy, towards Swami, and caught hold of his small feet. It was intriguing to many, an eight-year-old lady catching this boy's feet. My grandmother was crying. Swami took her headache. First, he touched her head with both of his hands and gently stroked it all over. And from then onwards, her grandmother had no headache at all. So, these are the things that happened in Mysore. And this I meant to share with you the publication of the first book on Sai Baba, written by his own teacher by name Subhanna, Sai Sin Charitra. We'll meet in the next session. Thank you for your time.